little bit about an artist named Pierre Mondrian. So this artist is from the Netherlands, which is all the way over here. This is where we are, all the way over here. It's really far away. And he actually passed away in 1944, so that was a long time ago. He was 72 years old. And he was an abstract artist. So abstract art is something where you usually see only about three, maybe four of the elements of art. You'll see color, line, shapes, and then sometimes you'll see space, which is when you see things that are in front of something or behind of something else. So you'll see color, line, and shape, mostly. So what colors do you see in this artwork? This is one of Pierre Mondrian's art pieces. You might have said that you see black and white. You may have also said that you see red, yellow, and blue. What are red, yellow, and blue called? Right, the primary colors. Red, yellow, and blue are the primary colors. So in Pierre Mondrian's artwork, he called his artwork D-Style, which just means the style. So it's D-Style. And in that, he used the primary colors, mostly. And he also used different kinds of lines. What kind of lines do we see? Yeah, we see kind of lines that are longer. We see lines that are a bit shorter, maybe. We also see that they are vertical, which means they're up and down. And horizontal, which means they are side to side. And then, of course, we said that he also uses black and white in his style called D style. So let's take a look at a different artwork that um, P.A. Mondrian has done. So what is different or similar between this artwork and this one that we saw before? So something that's the same that you might have seen is that we're still seeing the primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. We are also still seeing black and white. And we still see some lines that are horizontal, so they're side to side, and vertical, so they're up and down on our paper or our screen. But something that's different that you might have noticed is there's a lot more black lines here than there was in this one. In this one, we see pretty clean shapes that are just full rectangles and squares colored in with colors. And in this one, we see shapes that are sort of broken up, like maybe this line right here is going over the shapes. <clears throat> We're also seeing a lot more lines that are closer together in this one. And we also see a lot more of the color white. There's a lot more white being used in this one. So let's look at just one more. So this one looks really different, right? So something that's different about it is that these lines are actually made up of little squares and rectangles. And they're not actually done in black like in the other two artworks that we've seen by P.A. Mondrian. These lines are a lot yellow, right? There's a lot of yellow in these lines. But what's stuff that's similar about this one? Well, we still see the primary colors, right? We still see yellow, blue, and red. And we're still seeing shapes like squares and rectangles. And those are the shapes that P.A. Mondrian usually uses in his artwork. We also see a lot of vertical, so up and down lines, horizontal, so side to side lines. And that is something that we've been seeing in this one 
and also in this one as well. So now that we've learned a little bit about P.A. Mondrian from the Netherlands, we are going to take a look at P.A. Mondrian artworks that look like a spider's web. So to start my Mondrian spider web drawing, I'm going to first use a black marker. I'm going to start all the way in the top corner and I'm going to drag a line that goes all the way down to the opposite bottom corner. I'm going to draw that line all the way down from corner to corner diagonally across the paper. So now I'm going to start at the other top corner and I'm going to drag this one all the way down to this bottom corner over here. Now I've got an X in the middle of my paper. Now I want to draw a line that goes through this middle point to the top, the bottom of the paper. So I'm actually going to start from the middle point and I'm just going to draw a line straight up to the top of the paper. Now I'm going to go back to my middle point and I'm going to draw a line straight down to the bottom of my paper. Now I want to start back at my middle point again and draw a straight line horizontally to meet the side of my paper. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. So I'm starting at my middle point, I'm drawing a straight line horizontally across to the other side. Now I've got the base for my spider web, but now we've got to make it look even more like a spider web. So in a spider web, there's lots of little sort of smile lines or frown lines that are just little curved lines like part of a rainbow. Looks something like this. I'm going to start a little bit above on one of my lines. So I'll start on this one. A little bit above where the middle is. Maybe like my first fingertip length away. And I'm going to swoop down and then back up to meet at the line right next to it. So that's kind of like a smile line. Now I'm going to start where I left off on this line and swoop down and back up to meet the line right next to it, just like I did here. I'm going to keep doing that. So starting where I ended, swooping down and then back up to the next line. So do this all the way around until you meet back over here. another fingertip length up and then I'm going to swoop down and back up but this one's going to be even longer. So swoop down, back up, all the way around. I think I might do this one more time, but this one I'm going to start over here because I can't start up on the top of my paper. So I'll start this one over here. <clears throat> and actually how a spider would make this is he would start right here and then he would jump just like our marker over to this line and leave this trail of this string. And then he would jump over to this line jump over to this line. So this one's going to go off the paper, so I'll just end it right there. So now, I don't know where to start this over here, so I'll start over here. I'll measure my one fingertip length, and I'll go backwards, but I know this one will go off the paper again, just like that one did. So then I know where to start right back over here. The spider would jump to this line, jump to this line and this one's going to go off that paper again. So jump up. Now over here I see that I've still got a gap because I started on this one instead of this one. So I know this one will go off the paper again. I'll go backwards. Jump. And there is my spider web. So now that I have my spider web I want to 
decorate this like Mondrian. So we need the primary colors, which are blue, yellow, and red. So with your blue, yellow, and red, you're going to color in some of these little spaces, like these curvy rectangles or squares, or even these triangles in here. And you're not going to color in all of them. Maybe you'd leave some of them white. You can kind of make that decision for yourself how you want yours to look. There'll be some blue, some yellow, some red, and some white. Or you don't have to leave any white if you don't want to but just kind of how Mondrian does I'll just pick some shapes that I think I want to make blue so maybe I want that triangle to be blue maybe I want this sort of curvy square to be blue so I'll color that one in and then maybe I'll want to use yellow on this little kind of curvy triangle and then I'll put yellow up here so you can already kind of see if you remember what Mondrian's pieces looked like when Mondrian makes his artwork in D style he uses the primary colors with black and white and usually he has bold black lines and then the colors fill in the inside of those lines then I'll put some red maybe right here so this is like our own fun little version of what Mondrian would make in his artwork so I'm just gonna keep filling this in with more colors until I'm happy with it now that I am happy with my beautiful Mondrian spiderweb, I'm missing one more thing that I should add. Right, so we don't have a little spider in here yet. So we don't have our little creature that made our beautiful Mondrian spiderweb. So I have some black paper and some white paper. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out one big black circle out of my black paper so you can trace something that's circular if that helps you. I've got one kind of bigger black circle and then I'll do one that's a little bit smaller. One bigger black circle and one smaller black circle. So this bigger black circle will be for my spider's body and this little black circle will be for the spider's head. So what I would do is I would glue this piece down, both of these pieces down, like this, wherever on my spider web I think I want my spider to be. So I think my spider might live right here. So I'll just glue him down right on top right there. Now I have a little white piece of paper so I can make his eyes so you can see some eyes for him. Now I want to make some little pupils, that's the black part of your eye that you see with on his little eyes. So I'll draw his little pupils, might draw him kind of looking up. So now that I have my spider and his eyes, what is he missing? Well, spiders have lots of little legs and he doesn't have his legs yet, so I've got to draw those on. So spiders have eight legs, so how many am I going to put on each side? Right, so I'll put four on each side, so I'll start up here, I'm just going to draw them on next to him, put one leg, like a line out, and then I'll kind of make an angle and go upwards, and I'll do another one right here, and then this one I'm going to angle backwards and then our last one will do the same thing so then I'm gonna repeat this on the other side so I'll have one leg angles up another leg that angles up and then one that angles down and another that angles down 
All right, and now I have my beautiful Mondrian spider web complete with my little artist spider.